I have a problem. Well, I don't have a problem. Hold on. Uh, oh. This is my cat, Bo, and he's a little camera shy, but he also has kitty asthma, like asthma for cats. And as cute as it sounds, it really impacts his quality of life. Now, I've done a lot for him. I built him a catio, we have him on a kitty cat inhaler, even changed his diet to what the vet recommended. But there's one thing that I cannot get this cat to do, and that's to exercise. All right, you cat owners probably already know what's up, but if you don't have cats, just know that cats can be very independent. They're kind of like roommates. They don't really want to put up with your shit. They just want to do their own thing. This cat's not the one with asthma, by the way, but she likes being held a little bit more. Like I said, independent. <laughs> so how do we convince a cat that doesn't want to exercise to exercise? Well, for that, we have psychology and engineering. So let's start with the psychology, because that's the easy part. Have you ever seen any animals do crazy tricks? Dogs shaking hands, rolling over, you fake shoot them and they... Eh. Yeah, that's not something that dogs just know how to do. It's a conditioned response. The owner gives them a treat whenever they do behavior similar to what the owner wants. And over time, the dog pieces together that doing the right behavior gives them food, which they like. Now, cats aren't quite as intelligent, but the same thing still applies. If you give a cat a treat when they do something that they're supposed to do, they'll start liking that behavior more and doing it on their own. So how do we do this? Keep in mind that when he wants to exercise, the condition I'm trying to solve for is when I'm unavailable. So we need to automate this somehow. Kind of like a automated cat treat dispenser. Okay, we'll get to the cat treat dispensing in a little, but first, this is a cat wheel. It's made by a company called One Fast Cat. And yeah, they're expensive. I think when I got mine, uh, buying them new online, they were like 250, maybe $300. But don't let the price shock you. See, a lot of people buy these expecting their cats to just run in them. And then their cats don't because they're cats. So these end up getting sold used for like 50 bucks. At least that's what I got mine for. Check Facebook Marketplace, OfferUp, Craigslist, places like that. So here's what I'm thinking. We detect the cat running in the wheel. And then after the cat runs a certain distance, we give him a treat. If the distance he runs is more calories than the treat is, he'll end up losing weight and exercising in the process. That's the idea at least. So how do we do that? Okay, so first things first, we need to actually detect our cat running. And to do that, I just placed some magnets in the injection mold of the cat wheel. Basically every panel had a little circle in the middle and it just happened to perfectly fit a 10 millimeter magnet, plus a little 3D printed thing to just hold it in place. I'm also wanting to take the wheel off to show you how it reads, and he decided that now we get to wait. Come on, at least show the people that you can run. Okay, buddy, come on. Taking the wheel off of its stand, we can see how the wheel actually detects the cat running. This is the base that the wheel sits on. It spins on these wheels here, and there's this crossbar that connects the two sides. I was able to just put a Hall Effect sensor on the crossbar. If you don't know what a Hall Effect sensor is, it's basically a magic little bit of semiconductor that can detect a magnetic field changing. Basically, we have a known distance between each magnet, so every time we see the field switch polarities, we know that the wheel's gone at least that far. Okay, let's talk treat dispensing hardware. I went with a few different prototypes at first, and ultimately I settled on this one. Did I lose a gear? I lost a gear. That really grinds my gears. Or I guess it doesn't grind my gears because the gear got lost. And how do you grind a gear that you don't have? Ugh. Okay, let's talk actual treat dispensing hardware. This is the final design I came up with, but to explain how we ended up here, let's look at the last prototype that I made before this one. So after a few failed attempts, this is the prototype that ended up working good enough to prove that the proof of concept was there. Basically, it's a big vending machine auger in a tube. You take this top lid off, you put some treats in, and when it's time to dispense a treat, the screw inside is able to rotate, driving the treats forward. They eventually fall out this front tube right here. Uh, there'd normally be a front cap, so they can't just come out the front. Uh, but the treats would come out this little spout. And inside of the spout, I have a line break sensor, basically a photodiode and a red LED. When the treat breaks that photodiode, we know that a treat has been dispensed and we stop the rotation. This design worked, but there were two main flaws with it. The first, you can't fill this chamber up all the way. 
if you try, it would jam, or if it doesn't jam, when it would dispense a treat, it would dispense like four or five at the same time, which is just too many treats for him to lose weight with. For testing, I got around that problem by only putting like five or six treats in the entire thing and just making sure they were spaced out. That also meant that I had to fill up the wheel a lot. The second problem was one that I couldn't just work around. See, when this detects that it's out of treats, it does it by rotating the wheel for a certain amount of time, like 30 seconds. And if we don't detect a treat coming out the front, then we can assume that there's no more treats left in it. The problem is my cat knows how this sounds. So if he hears it go off and then waits 30 seconds for a treat and one doesn't come out, then it's not giving him the reward. I'd noticed that after that would happen, he'd kind of refuse to run in the wheel until I'd show him by manually turning the wheel with him on it that more treats were in the treat dispenser. We need some way of knowing that this is out of treats before it's actually out of treats. Enter version two. Well, really it's like version four, but version two for the sake of this video. Okay, so to start off, this is powered with an Arduino Uno R4 Wi-Fi? Yeah, nailed it. Uh, basically, we want this because this has a web interface to control it, set up settings, stuff like that, so we needed something with Wi-Fi. All right, me from the future here. I uh, just wanted to jump in real quick and talk about the microcontroller and the coding side of stuff, since that's a big part of this printables competition. Initially, I thought I was going to go with the Arduino Uno R4 Wi-Fi, specifically because it had Wi-Fi built in. Now, it turned out it didn't work quite as intended. The coding architecture I went with uses a lot of tasks to do MQTT, host a website, and have really accurate timing for detecting that cat tree and stopping the rotation of the sensor. I do think it's possible to make the Arduino R4 work. However, I ran into a few bugs that seem to be reported online by other people. And there's a handful of hours left in this competition. Less than a handful of hours. So the code I'm uploading is going to be based around the ESP32. This is for two main reasons. One, it has more memory. And the second, it has two cores. So I can have one core dedicated to keeping track of the cat wheel rotation and dispensing the treat, and then put all of the other stuff, the Wi-Fi and internet-based stuff, all in the second core, meaning it won't interfere with the timing. That being said, all of the core functionality, tracking the cat wheel and dispensing the treat, would run fine on the Arduino. And not even this fancy one, like any Arduino could do that. I did think it would be really cool to use the LED matrix to show the IP address of the device when it connects to a Wi-Fi network. That's always a major pain point with Raspberry Pis and microcontroller projects. A lot of people follow along and they get to connecting to the network, but then they can't actually reach the web interface because they don't know the IP address and they don't know how to see that easily in the router. So I really think that's a smart design choice. That being said, in future revisions, I think it would be really cool if that screen was on the back of the microcontroller. See, you're gonna have a bunch of wires come out of these headers and you'll probably wanna put this in an enclosure, which means that you'll want a diffusion screen up against those LEDs. And spacing it out that far to account for the headers just means that you're not gonna get really good visibility on those LEDs. If they put the LEDs on the back, then you could have the microcontroller face down with all of the connections on the bottom and the screen up top showing through whatever plastic that you have 3D printed. Due to time constraints, the only code that I really have validated is the ESP32 code, so that's what I'm putting online. However, I plan on coming back to this and getting the Arduino code working, so if you do have an Arduino, you can use that as well. All of the sensor boards that I have work both with 5 volt and 3.3 volt logic, so there's no concern there. You won't have to buy any new sensors. Maybe it's a little bit of a cop-out answer, but uh, turns out these are both ESP32s. And what I mean by that is the Arduino R4 Wi-Fi uses an ESP32 on board to do all of the Wi-Fi stuff. It's just that when you flash your code, it runs on a main processor and the ESP32 is kind of like a coprocessor that's only there to do Wi-Fi stuff. If I was better at microcontroller coding, there is a way to bypass the internal Arduino stuff and write directly to the ESP32 but you can get into some weird situations where if you do something wrong, it's a whole process to recover the device. So I didn't want to go down that route, only having a few days to do the code and all. It was just a little bit too risky, but technically you could do it. I even went as far in the ESP32 code to avoid using any libraries like Wi-Fi manager that aren't compatible with the Arduino, implementing it myself. That way the port to move all of the code, Wi-Fi stuff included, over to the Arduino should be a little bit easier if it's possible. But for now, let's go back to past me, the guy that was really ambitious and thought that coding on the Arduino was only gonna take a few hours, 
and he can show you how this all works internally. To start with, this design has a hopper up top. You can slide this case open and just dump a crap ton of cat treats up there. So no more having to refill this every day. To solve the second problem, we basically have two chambers now, the top one with the hopper and then the bottom one where the treats come out of. Basically, we have two photo detectors, one that sits between the top and bottom chamber and then another one that's on the front. We can detect that treats have stopped falling from the top chamber into the bottom chamber and know that the hopper is actually out of cat treats while there's still a few left in the bottom chamber, meaning we can refill this before it's actually out of cat treats. Also, to solve the problem where multiple cat treats would come out at once, we can use different ratios of the auger screws and gearing to ensure that the top spins slower than the bottom, basically meaning that the bottom advances treats faster than the top is dropping them in, therefore spacing out the treats for us automatically. In order to do that, if we take off this back gear cover, we can see that we have a drive gear that goes on this continuous servo, and then two gears, one for each hopper. I don't have any bearings in right now because I'm still working on the electrical. We can take our back cover off and you can see that our motor is actually internal on the design. This just helps it be a little bit smaller. We can then take off our front compartments, this one for the hopper, and then the slightly more complex one for the, uh, the bottom sensor package. There you can see our augers, like so. And something really cool about these is this sloped surface means that you can print these with pretty minimal supports. You need a little bit on the bottom surface, but all of this can just print without supports. So all in all, pretty easy print. There's so many cool design features in this device that I just don't have the time to fully go over. Like this internal wire channel that allows you to route the wires to the microcontroller without them being on the outside of the device. Or this labyrinth joint that I designed in the gear cover so that grease can't slowly work its way out of the gear system over time. But that's all for another time. Let's go put this on the cat wheel, get it all connected, and at least show you the cat running on it. Cause really, isn't that what you're here for? All right, let's go do it. Oh, one last thing. The mounting system for this just uses these three holes on the back and two bolts. It's really adaptable and you can pretty much put this on anything. So if you don't have a cat wheel and you just want a cat treat dispenser where you can hit a web API and have a treat come out, don't worry, I got you covered. I'm putting the hole pattern for this back design online with the files so you can design your own mounts and put this on whatever you want all right now let's actually go put it on the wheel oh he knows he's gonna get treats soon okay so the mount's a basic clamshell design there's basically a front and back plate that just bolt together the only thing notable is there's some filleted out jutting bits that kind of act as locating tabs to make sure it's extra secure. As far as the text is concerned, uh, the wheel's called One Fast Cat, so just a little play on words. Uh, there is a version that doesn't have the text if you don't want some Comic Sans in your living room. The last thing is the bolts that hold the actual treat dispenser on go through the back cap and the gear cover. So it's not just holding the thing on by the gear cover, it's holding the entire assembly. And yeah, uh, I think I mentioned it before, but this is a development version that has like a bunch of headers and stuff down here so I can swap out microcontrollers. So your version is gonna be a lot slimmer. Uh, the microcontroller assembly, I think only out juts like 12 or 15 millimeters. It's, it's pretty low profile, just not this one. The one last notable thing to mention is you'll notice that this is sitting at a slight upward angle. And that's because in testing, I noticed that when my cat would run, sometimes he would do a really hard sprint and like land on the wheel hard to try to shake treats out of the dispenser. So putting it at a slight upward angle like that means that any impulses will work and send the treats backwards and not forwards out towards the spout. So no more free treats for him. All right, let's get the wheel back on. I didn't even have time to put treats back in it and he already wants to investigate. Look at that. Bow. Psst, psst, psst. Yeah, good boy. All right, everything's all powered up. We can go to our web interface and we can see that everything is working as intended. Uh, we can go to MQTT and we can go ahead and hook this up to like Home Assistant or something like that to track when it's out of treats, the distance he's ran, the treats that he's gotten and stuff like that. Uh, but that is for another time. Uh, let's just go ahead and dispense treats and make sure that it's feeding correctly out of the hopper. Oh, that's not good. 
So yeah, I was dumb and forgot to turn my microphone on. But that right there, that was the first treat being dispensed. Let's watch that again. No, my microphone was off for the first test. Oh man. Well, it worked. Uh, to recap what I was saying, when I moved it out and did the final install, uh, somehow a push button on the ESP32 uh, broke off. So I don't know if you can see that, but uh, this gold bit right at the top there, uh, that's supposed to look like this silver button up here. Um, so yeah, that apparently uh, shorted out a board. Uh, luckily, everything is like a prototyping setup, so very easy and quick to swap one of these guys out because uh, it's all socketed. Oh, I know, they're so excited. Um, apart from that, uh, these sensors on the bottom, uh, they have a little potentiometer that you can adjust. So basically, they're able to be tuned uh, what light level to detect. And I was testing this with a flashlight uh, and without this little cover on. So the increased darkness of this or the flashlight, one of those, uh, was enough to mess up the logic. But yeah, totally works. An hour and a half before the deadline for this to get put in. So just to show you that again, if I hold that there. Yeah, dispenses a single treat. Look at that. Cat treat. Here you go, girl. So yeah. Uh, that's about it. I'm going to go ahead and finish printing uh, a cover for the microcontroller so I can get some good photos of it to upload on printables. If you happen to make one of these and uh, you want to let me know how bad my code is, go ahead and do so in the YouTube comments or on printables, uh, whatever you prefer. But hope you enjoy the project. Uh, hope you make one of these. Make your cat lose some weight, get healthy, and uh, yeah, give them something entertaining to do. Alrighty, that's all. See you next time. to the labor. Come on. Come on. <laughs> All right, good good enough for a blooper reel, I guess. <laughs>